us. So yeah, so the, the main difference between them uh, is that they've started compressing their menus. So instead of having a, uh, a large menu atop the 2D or the 3D window that has a ton of icons, they've now kind of like grouped them together. So if I, if I on mouse over the, the sewing one, all of the sewing tools are in there now. And if I go mm -hmm. over the, like, the, the polygonal draw tool, um, you'll see the polygon, rectangle, and ellipse are there. So in the other version, each of those is its own interface button. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that they've done is change the way that turning on and off the simulation works. Um, so right now, simulation is not running. And if I click the button, you can see that it, like, it didn't actually start running. And the reason for that is that, A, there's nothing in the scene. I cannot simulate an empty scene. Um, and so if I were to just go in and make a little rectangle, it will now allow me to turn it on. And, like, you can see, like, it's, it's crazy fast now. Yeah, the before it would be a little, a little sluggish. I'm, I'm still on the normal setting for, for simulation. I can actually even speed it up by switching over to my GPU, which is an even faster version of the simulation. So I'll get, you know, 60 FPS while I'm simulating things, which is pretty really nutty. crazy when you're, when you're doing this kind of simulation. Yeah. Um, and then what you would do is go and switch to the, the final one fitting, which is when you get your, your final shape and everything the way you want it to. So the way that I kind of see this is these three um, variations of simulation work as your stages of building up the garment. So when I'm constructing the garment and I'm, and I'm building it for the character, I tend to use fast to just get things where I want them and pin them and, and, and stitch them and get them where they go. Mm -hmm. Then when I'm starting to fit it and make it tailored to the character and, and kind of start to look better, that's when I switch over to normal. And then when I'm ready to export, that's when I switch to accurate. So fitting would essentially be like on the older versions where you would chuck your particle distance really tiny. So you exactly, get those exactly. cr crisp no, These, these don't change particle distance. You still have to do that manually. Um, but it does, yeah. it does give you the option of kind of switching back and forth between those. And so mm. things, things that change when you switch to fitting are going to be things like uh, fabric that's going through itself will kind of fix in that simulation. It'll kind of pop out and go into the right order. Um, oh, that's beautiful. So if you're doing something like a necktie where you've tied it up and whatnot and you're getting like weird penetration, switching over to fitting will will fix that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I don't like uh, that they've done with this version, also, uh, you'll see here that uh, this is a little bit different too. Uh, let me go zoom in on the fabric here. So if you notice, the little red icon is on here indicating that I'm currently simulating. And as soon as I hold Alt and, and start rotating, it turns off. Oh. So what they've done is they've killed the simulation while you're manipulating the camera. And what this does is it, like, it allows the camera to move more fluidly by just pausing any simulation. So it's kind of like one, one system stops and the other one kicks in. Yeah, uh, um, you can't do what? Is there a setting like you to change? No, yeah. that's, that's kind no. of the new, the new hotness. Bummer. Um, the other thing that they've changed, and this one I, I don't particularly like, um, is the, the presets for fabric have changed in, in the way that they display them. Mm -hmm. um, so if I grab the, the default fabric here and I go down to its preset, currently I'm set on, on custom, but if I use the drop down, instead of just having a list, they now have these, these uh -huh. icons. Um, and I just, I find this a little bit more troublesome to actually scroll through and find than when it was just a big list of things. Yeah, um, I, I just find that I'm spending more time in here than than when I didn't, and so yeah, I, I like how you can see how uh, like dense the material is, how fuzzy it is, and exactly. stuff like that. Yeah, you can see kind of like oh, okay, this yeah. one's gonna hang more than that one, right? It's got a little bit more. I do um, like it, but I also don't like it. Like yeah. it's okay, like, and so there there is that. Um, so let me let me go and kind of set up uh, a character here. We're gonna go file import obj. And I'll bring in uh, my avatar from this character. So OBJ uh, and base is her avatar. So there's two things that you can do here when you start doing clothing simulation, uh, which mm -hmm. have to do with the import. The first of which is that this is, uh, because it is a physics simulation, scale is of the utmost importance. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, uh, if you think of a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter uh, piece of silk, 
that's going to deform very different than, let's say, a 10 meter by 10 meter piece of, of burlap, mm -hmm. right? The, the scale of both the fabric and of how big the fabric is, is going to change. So um, one, of, one of the best examples I, I love to give with this is, let's say you were to try and build an article of clothing for the Statue of Liberty. Okay, you want to make her a poncho. Mm -hmm. If you make that out of like something really thick, like a really thick canvas or, or burlap, and you're making it for the real Statue of Liberty, you know, that's a huge sculpture. And that fabric is going to be really, really big. And you can kind of perceive how thin the wrinkles would get. If you were to try and do the same thing on an action figure, something the size of a Barbie, that same burlap is not going to give you the same wrinkles. Right? Yeah. It's, it's almost going to give you nothing because the fabric at that scale is so small. So one of the things that a lot of character artists will do is when they're importing their characters, they'll muck around with the scale. So if I import my character at, say, 200%, instead of being just under 6 feet tall, she'll be just under 12 feet tall. And that means that the fabric is going to give me slightly smaller wrinkles, right? It's going to give me tighter and thinner wrinkles. Um, I do this kind of thing when I'm trying to get really thin stuff. So uh, a bathing suit or superhero spandex kind of thing. because um, So you get those really, really nice wrinkles that appear. Um, you have to scale this up. Now, you do have to be careful when you scale because you, you also need to inversely scale when you export. Yeah, you have to go down. Yeah, so like going up is fine, right? If I go, if I go up from, oh, that you're not going to actually work. So if I go from a hundred percent, which is you know the the scale that that character naturally is, uh, where's this tool? This guy. Um. Okay. I'll just reopen this. Draw some of the math on screen. So if you were to go from 100% to 100%, right, there's no change. Uh, mm -hmm. Your character is, is exactly the way that you want them to be. So 100% in, we'll say that's in, is going to give you an out of also 100%. So that makes sense. If I double my character in scale, which is what I've done here, set it to 200%, my export has to be the inverse of that scale. So that would be 50%, right? So that's going to bring this back down to 200 or to 100%. Yeah, because it's, it's You have half. to be careful with that because not all numbers scale really well. Um, mm. For instance, if I were to scale her up to 300%, that'll work really well on import, but on export, I now don't have a decent number to use. Right, because the the inverse of going backwards this way is sixty six point six 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 repeating. Right, it, it's on forever, and so that means on export the clothing is going to be off in scale. So if you do change scale when you're bringing stuff in and out, always make sure that you're using a, a scale that you can go backwards from. You can do the inverse. simple, essentially. Yeah. Like two hundred is probably yeah. the most high need to go really right yeah. like now double. i have done some fabrics where like i've gone up to 10 times the scale Damn. um and 10 times is insane right so the the other thing that this is going to change when you're scaling is your particle distance mm -hmm. so at 200 percent, anything that's supposed to be two centimeters apart is actually one centimeter apart right so what it's doing is it's actually con condensing all of those particles a little bit and so I will, I will do this on occasion because it gives, me, uh, it gives me some pretty nice results. Now, you do also want to watch out, too, about your, uh, your character because uh, when you bring them in, uh, sometimes if your scale is really drastically off, um, your silhouette in the 2D viewport will actually start having holes in it. Where oh. they, they go through the, the Z-plane here, and anything behind the, the grid, behind the Z-plane, disappears. Okay. So you'll start getting like gaps in the arm where the elbow is pushed back a little bit and you'll start seeing like the thigh disappear here. Um, I, I'm pretty decent at this scale. Everything seems to be working, you know, it's as expected. Yeah. So, uh, so that's going to be good like that. I'm going to go and change my avatar color here. Um, I just find the white to be a little stark. Yeah, a little um, harsh on the yeah. eyes. Okay. <clears throat> so the idea is you want a dress shirt. You want to... Uh, like an office officer, uh, uniform. I'll get you a photo just so you could, uh, yeah, 
Yeah, so it's, exactly. a, it's a, a, a dress shirt with collar of sorts, right? Uh, yeah, it's a, a 1964 Russian officer uniform. I okay, got you. Yep. I mean, photo right here. Uh, so send that open, and I'll take a look at it. <clears throat> oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So the idea is to do the this this yeah it's mainly the collar like everything else I'm pretty comfortable with but I always have a hard time with the folding geo like <laughs> okay, like so, it's folding yeah. on top of itself when I see something like this uh, the thing that I want to kind of keep aware of uh, looking at it is not what it looks like folded but what it would look like standing up mm -hmm. and so what happens like you can see that there's a seam here right For the lapel and the collar are separate. Yeah, And that seam's going to run all the way around. So if the collar was sticking up and came around here, it would kind of do this kind of thing, come to a corner and go down. And there would be that split right here and do that. So you're going to have that kind of thing mm -hmm. as your split. So I want to kind of keep that, that path in mind, that, that shape in mind, because that's going to very much uh, affect kind of how this works. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to move that over to my other monitor here, and I'll kind of rough out something uh, similar in regards to the shape of this jacket. So mm -hmm. I'm going to switch over to my polygon tool, and I'll just start off the center line. And this is about collarbone high. So I'm going to go here, go about here to off the shoulder, over the sleeve. He's actually got some really nice uh, darts cut into this thing. It's a really fitted jacket. Uh, yeah. And I'll just bring it kind of down to the waist a little bit. Now it's going to look a little different too because I'm I'm on a female mesh here, but yeah, but like I could I could compensate. Yeah, exactly. Like that part I'm not worried about. I think I'm worried about his pockets. That is something. That's the uh, trick. I can, I can show you something pretty quick with pockets. Oh yeah. Okay. Because cool. he has these like um, belly pockets on the side there. They're very fitted too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I'm going to go now into adjust my curvature. And we'll give this thing a little bit of a neck, and we'll give the uh, the sleeve here its opening. I can see that I'm going to have to bring that over. There's not enough chest here, uh, and so these these points are going to have to come over. I think the side should be okay. Let's go back to edit pattern, and I'm going to bring probably just this line out back to edit curve, and I'll bring this point back out. I want to make sure I'm not eating into the chest material. Uh, okay, so there's that. I'm going to uh, symmetrical pattern with sewing and put it on the other side here so we get two of them. Like so. And we'll get this moved forward a little bit so that our breasts aren't popping through. Okay, so something like that. Uh, and then I want to create the back of this garment. Um, presumably... It's going to be a solid piece at the back. Uh, so let's go into our polygon tool. And I'll start off the shoulder here and try and get the same dimensions for that angle. Uh, I'm going to go halfway across and then down to the bottom. I'm using these pink lines to snap it so that I end up kind of in the same ballpark. Mm -hmm. Bring this up to the sleeve and then in here. And again, we'll go and edit our curvature. Pull that in. I don't like doing that tool. I want this tool. There we go. Looks more responsive now on the 11, how the curve is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I find everything in this new version is just a step up in terms of performance. How much, how much is Marvelous Design? Like the new one? Uh, it's, it's about a buck a day. I pay uh, what, it, what essentially equates to uh, $356 a year. There's no perpetual, like for the for like uh, there, the version. So there is perpetual, but perpetual doesn't give you updates, and it actually works out to be more expensive than a dollar a day when you get the perpetual license. Uh, and so okay. I find it it actually works better to just get it annually. Okay. Uh, okay, so I've got a back on here now, so we'll go and rotate this. I'm not going to bother with sleeves because that's kind of irrelevant at this point. Yeah. So we'll go in and do some stitching here now. So I'll go to my stitch and we'll go do segment sewing and I'll do top of the shoulder to top of the shoulder, side to side. Uh, and I'll leave the front open for now. We're just going to go and simulate this and let it come to a, a little bit of a rest. 
Now again, with, with breasts, it's going to kind of force the jacket out a little bit. I'm going to put some buttons on it so that it uh, ends up in the right place. I'm also in the slowest simulation here, so we'll change oh, that over to the fast. Wow, the speed difference. Oh yeah, night, night and day. Night, night and day. day, crazy. Okay, so you can see that like the corner is already kind of here. It's already kind of doing what, it, what it's supposed to do. I'm going to go and set this fabric to be something a little bit thicker. Um, you know, and this would be like an old kind of wool, uh, jacket. Yeah. And so I want to, yeah. I want to give it something a little bit more, uh, indicative of that time. Uh, and then we're going to go and do some buttonholes here. Now there, there is a button tool in here, uh, but since that doesn't really export the way that I, I like to do things when I'm, when I'm converting this, uh, what I tend to do instead is just put a little circular, uh, little circular guy here which is mm -hmm. a, a representation of the button and, uh, and just stitch them to each other. And that gives oh. me kind of the, the closing that I want. So uh, I'll take that guy and I'm going to copy and paste and I'll right click when I paste it. So I can put a couple of them in at the same distance. Oh, uh, you do the iteration pasting. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll set these things to be 15 CM apart, something like that. <laughs> And because this is symmetrical editing, it's copied left and right. So now we can go into stitching. And again, I'll do free stitching this time. And I'll go from top all the way around, to top all the way around on each button. Now, if I actually did the stitching first, the um, before copying and pasting, then it would have stayed. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's not like this takes forever. So we'll simulate that. And that'll pull the jacket closed. And we're obviously running into an issue here where like it, it doesn't understand that one's in front and one's in behind. It's kind of just smooshed them together. So mm -hmm. to fix that, I'm gonna just take one side. It looks like the, uh, the left side should be in front. So I'll just switch my layer to one. And well, this is a little bit of a funny bug here. The layer thing doesn't actually change until you edit the, um, the simulation. And then it seems to kick in. Yeah. And even then, oh, I did the wrong one. This one should be one. Oh, they're symmetrical, so it did both. Uh, we're going to break the symmetrical editing, uh, remove linked editing, and I'll put this one back to zero. Now, they do say that, um, that using layers, using the numbers, is a performance hit when you're trying to simulate. Really? And that's because it's always trying to look at positionally where the fabric is. And so the workflow that they want you to use is to, to put a number in, simulate it, kind of like I'm doing here, you know, get, get all the kinks out so that it's, it's in the order that we want it to be in. And once that order is okay, we can get it to stop messing around here. Then we just pause it and set the layer back. And then when you simulate it again, you should have no problems. It just, it just understands, oh, that's the order I'm supposed to be in. Okay. Okay. Right. So now we can start kind of pulling this out a little bit here. And there's like, there's the start of that lapel. Now yeah. this one you can see is not really playing along. It's not really doing what I want it to do. Even if I do kind of pull it and get it into the right area, like it's, it's, it's just folding back. Yeah. Here. It's always going to want to fold back. And so one of the tricks that I use here is to actually kind of uh, just create a fold line. So if I turn off my simulation and I go to inside uh, internal polygon line, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut an edge from somewhere around this corner here to around where the button is, like that. And you can see yeah. that that line is kind of exactly where I want the fold to be. Yeah, pretty much. And so I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll just cut it across like that. And then what we can do is once this is simulating again, we can use those fold lines, this one, if I can go and select it, and this one, and we can actually increase the fold strength and then bring the angle down. And again, that tends to bug out a little bit unless you change your renderer. So it looks like I got the angle backwards. It looks like it's peeking out. And so we'll just go and make sure that those angles are going the other way, fold angle 360. And again, I'm just going to switch renderers because that seems to force it to do what you're supposed to do. And as soon as you do that, you can see like it, it actually feels oh. quite nice. Just like that. Just <laughs> like that. 
and so yeah so now the the idea is to do the the other the other part of this right which is the the collar that goes around that typically uh the shape that you see when you get that i'm going to do this as a rectangle here and i'm going to do it kind of about this length here and i did this as only half i want to unfold this uh, and the reason i want that is that i want these these points here uh, and i'm just going to move them up a little bit just to give this a little bit of a shape this is then going to get rotated and brought to the back where we can kind of start simulating it along the back here so i'm going to go to my free stitch free sewing and I'll start at the center and go to the end. Start at the center and go to the end. You, you get a little blue dot where it's the same it, distance. It, yeah. And so we can do that. And we can do that. And then we'll simulate this. And that should pull it down the right way. And I'll try and kind of force it to where I want it to go. And again, I want to take that stitching that I just did. I go to my stitch selection tool. This one and this one. So this is going to be the same thing. I'm going to crank this up and crank this up. And again, I'll just swap between these two here to force it to actually fold. And that should actually force it to start folding the fabric there, if I got the angle correct. There we go. And then I just want to stitch this angle here into this angle here. Uh, and then that'll, that'll kind of pull it around to complete the, uh, the collar. So for that, we're going to go into our free stitch again. And that line that we want to attach is along here. And so we're going to go from here. I think I'm only going to go about 12 centimeters long. I'm going to right click again to force that distance. I'll put that there. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. Just go out, right click. 12 centimeters. It's because I've got this thing longer than I actually want it. Like so. And simulate, and that'll bring it in. And that's looking decent like that. So all I want to do now is just cut this where that angle changes. Um, so if I go in here, I'm going to just bring that up along that spot. There we go. Simulate again. Oh, let's stay open. You. You could also use like pins and stuff to keep it. Yeah. So everywhere. so again, like I'm I'm getting into an, a a spot here where like again, even with the fold set as strong as it goes, the mm. inclination to the for this piece here is to always go and fold back out again. Uh, and part of that has to do with again like how these things are stitched together. Um. If I go back into the edit sewing, uh, I do want to make sure, like, in shortening that edge, I also shortened my stitch. And so I'm just going to go and drag those back out again. Um, shortening the stitch will, will definitely alter the way that the fabric is simulating. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go in, pull that all the way out. Let's go all the way to the end. And I'll just do the same thing here. I don't want any gap in that. So I should sew it there. And there, I mean, that is the shape of the collar here That's, now. Yeah, pretty, see pretty that much. That is, it looks like I do have the angle backwards in the back, which I always seem to do this. So I'm going to go and select those two, bring this down to zero. Again, I'll switch simulation modes um, so that that does, whoops, kind of kick back in the way that it's supposed to. And that'll help the collar kind of fold the right way as well. Uh, now, you may also want to, like, again, you can see that where the collar is attached to the shirt here. Actually, mm -hmm. that might work best at 360 or at 180. Just keep it flat. Um, so what you may want to do is to force another um, line on here to, to help the, the fold. Right, so we're starting at kind of like this corner, um, which is over here, and then where the top of that fold is, is kind of in the center over here. So if I drew another internal I got line, an internal there, line, yeah. So I'll go to the internal line tool, and I'll just kind of go from there. Let me make sure I snap this in the middle and put it back on this one. I should have double clicked. Let me try that again. 
So from there, there we go. Um, and again, I can add curvature to this one as well, right? But uh, the idea is again, to give this a little bit of strength and to curl it the right way so that once you start simulating, it kind of helps that fold along. Yeah, it's like, it's like when you fold a piece of paper and then it keeps that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, uh, the idea here too, uh, with this being this, this kind of uh, material, uh, one of the things that I like to do with the fabric to really kind of hit home uh, that this is a, a, a uh, article of clothing that has been um, manufactured to, to survive, right? Like this is a, a military jacket. Um, yeah. And so it's not going to be something that's shoddily built. Like right now, if you were to, to say, uh, we're not designing a, a military jacket, but we're designing a blouse for this woman to go to work, like the pattern is, is still going to look like this, right? The, the real big difference here is how the fabric is kind of put together. So if I go to my fabric, I'm at 1.62 here. We're going to turn on thick rendering so that we can actually see what this looks like thickness-wise. So that does look more like a blouse than it does a jacket. I'm going to yeah, go and increase sense. this to something like five, and you start getting like thicker, chunkier yeah, versions definitely. of that jacket. Now, that didn't change the simulation. Simulation's off at the moment. If I simulate, the, the thickness of the fabric will determine uh, how big and how small your, your folds can be, but um, you can see that we're kind of getting something that looks pretty decent here. The mm. other thing that I would go and do, and, and remind, just so you're reminded here, I haven't edited this. We're still at 20. And the yeah, part, still the part a little bit. Usually I bring it to eight when I'm exporting. I, I go down to three when I export. I get it as yeah. low as I can. I my actually, computer my, would explode. Yeah, my, my computer <laughs> cries when I, when I do it, but I want to make sure that it's as, as clean and smooth as possible. So here's another really cool trick that you can do. I'll show you a couple of really cool tricks when doing uh, thicker garments that help. So I'm going to select the entire pattern. I would do this after the sleeves are done too. Like once you're happy with the garment, Sleeves, do, cufflinks, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, so I'll select the whole thing, and I'm going to do a layer clone under. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me a copy of the jacket. I'll go and put it up there. And this copy is being sewn to the inside. So what it's done is each panel is sewn to its clone. So when you simulate this, you're going to start to get them to behave. And I, you can see now in it like, like thicker in the way that they're they're behaving now yeah, the like folding like you can see that this is almost inflating now um yeah. and so you do have to be careful with that right where you've done your folds the fold is then the opposite when you get an internal shape and so you can see okay. that this is going to kind of screw things up a little bit so let's we'll go go get rid of this you would have to go in and, and adjust your your um your folding mm -hmm. to make sure that everything's where you want it we'll go this guy back I think I have a way I could do that uh, a little outside of ZBrush to get that like thick uh, outside of Marvelous to get that thickness. Yeah, uh, like I, I always go into uh, into one of the modeling packages and I'll like I'll I'll use a shell modifier in Max or I'll, I'll use yeah. ZBrush and add some thickness. Um, um, edge loops in ZBrush. In ZBrush, same thing. yeah, same so thing. It does the same thing, but one of the reasons that I like to do it inside of here is that the thickness will really change the way that the fabric is simulating. And that can really affect like how big and how small your wrinkles are. And so I do want to get it kind of as accurate here as I can. I'm going to go and bring this down from 20 down to 10. And I'll show you the other kind of trick that I use. We'll go and simulate this again. Ooh, the collar pop. Yeah, like nice. it's really, it's really starting to kind of drape and hang the right way. Yeah. So what I tend to do now is I'll go and put seam taping on. So... Seam taping is something that's done in actual uh, garments of clothing uh, in order to kind of uh, stiffen up the clothing a little bit. Um, you've probably seen this in, in things like tents and, and, and nylon clothing um, where you get, you know, something, something like this, right? Where there's like, you can see there's a shiny piece of material here that's been stitched to that seam. Yeah. And, and what that does is it kind of, it thickens that seam. It makes that theme a little bit more rigid, a little bit stronger. Um, and that's, that kind of helps it hold its shape a little bit more. So this is really useful um, in places like the collar where you want it to remain rigid. And so if I go to the collar here and I go and select the outer edge 
we'll do the bottom and we'll do the top. What you can do when you have those edges selected is in your settings here, there's seam taping. And you can go and just turn that on and you'll see the thickness here. It's gone and added, added the tape to the seam. And you can play with that thickness here in millimeters, it's at 10. Again, because we're doubled the size, you know, that means that it's kind of half that. Yeah. Um, and this will actually affect the way that the garment is, uh, is simulating. So this is it just giving it like rigidity? It's rigidity. So when you look at the, uh, the, uh, the image that you sent me of, of the guy, so one of the things that's very clear, like these are going to be, even just with the stitching they have in there, that is going to be a very rigid piece of fabric. Um, mm -hmm. And the same thing with like the shoulders, right? Like to keep that corner, that peak in the shoulders, putting, putting seam taping in there is a really good way of being able to do that. So I'm just going to go and outline all of these pieces here and I'll go and turn on the seam taping and I'll kind of show you the, the difference here with it and, and without. So there's seam taping it at uh, that. And uh, we'll grab this guy, seam taping. I'll grab this guy and seam taping. Okay. So if I go and simulate this again, the seam taping is going to add a level of rigidity. Yeah, to that's a crisp corner. Yeah, so they become really, really crisp, um, which again, you know, is going to help you in, in terms of uh, keeping that, uh, that kind of shape the way that you mm -hmm. want it. Um, in terms of the, uh, so when you were saying that he's got pockets here, are you referring to these yeah, here? Yeah, they're so really they, little... So they look to me like they're they're darts and not uh, and not pockets. Oh, what's a dart? Like a fake pocket, like a pseudo pocket or something? Or? No. So what a dart is, I'll, I'll show you that. I'll make one on here. Usually they exist on on women's clothing, uh, but they're they're often associated with tailoring, with with making something fit someone specifically. So I'm just going to broaden the width of this thing here, and we'll re-simulate it again. So it's getting a little too much of the uh, the body showing through that area. Mm -hmm. Let's go and pull this out here. The seam taping is going to make that act a little bit strange. We'll just kind of make sure it gets pulled out. There we go. Okay, so the idea with, uh, with a dart is a dart is used uh, primarily when the shape of the body underneath changes in such a way that the fabric becomes uh, harder to, to edit in a way that's going to make it look good. Uh, usually on women, this has to do with their breasts, right? So you've got this this bulbous form sticking out from from the torso in which the fabric's always just going to kind of hang and do these kind of funny drapery folds mm -hmm. so what a dart is if i go into my uh my pattern here uh i think somewhere in here there actually is a there's the dart tool right there uh and that's that's what i, I believe he's got on his jacket uh this would be somewhere underneath the chest and it would be this kind of shape like this and so what this is, is essentially it's a hole cut into the fabric, like so. And then it's gone and sewed back to itself again. Oh, and so, so if like I do this on, like it tightens it up. Yeah, so if I do this on one side and not the other, what you're going to see is that that gives you that shape that looks like a pocket that's there. And that you can see with, with a woman's blouse, like it kind of cinches up underneath the breast and makes it a little bit tighter again. Mm -hmm. And so the nice thing with, with darts is that they can be, you know, you can make them as wide or as narrow as you want. You know, you can kind of tuck them in like this and, and simulate them. Um, you'll see them, like I said, you see them a lot on women's clothing when it comes to kind of uh, uh, contouring to the shape of their body. But when I, yeah, when I look at that line on him, that line looks like this. It looks like one of these lines, mm -hmm. um, which again, on, on a male form would, would you know, be really helpful in, in making this thing tight against his torso and allowing for like the nice big pec muscles to exist. Um, okay. And so, Pretty yeah, easy, so that's, man. that's probably what that is. Uh, the other thing that I would do, I'm going to go and delete the dart here. I'm just going to mess this up. Uh, the only other thing that you could do with this um, is to alter the way that it's made. So if you've, you've heard that saying off the cuff, Yeah. you know, I, I, he was just saying it off the cuff. Yeah, like just off the cuff. Yeah, like yeah, so whatever. What that, where that saying comes from is that a long time ago when shirts were made, the stiffness that you got in your collar and in your cuff was actually a piece of card, uh, like cardboard that was put in there. And yeah. often gentlemen back then would write notes on that cardboard. So when they spoke off the cuff, 
they were reading notes that they had written on their sleeve. Mm. There yes. is a material here. I'm going to go and create a new material. And we're going to change the color of this material so we can, we can see a physical difference between the two. I'm going to make this one gray. Uh, and it did just duplicate the one that was there. That's okay. I'm going to go into this one, and I'm going to make this um, a trim fusible rigid. And I'm going to put this on the collar. And what this will do when you simulate is it tends to, and again, I want to make sure that this is actually updating. So I'm going to switch simulations a couple of times. What this does is it tends to make the collar a little bit more rigid. Um, right, because I've got something that's a, a stiffer material in there. Uh, and that can help that collar actually kind of sit the right way and sit like a collar. I think I've got the neckline too big. I'm getting, uh, you can see yeah, a little ball this here. It yeah. looks like that's, that's too long across there. But anyway, yeah. that will give you something fairly decent in terms of that, uh, that shape. Would you do it also on the cuff of the hand because it's off the cuff? Same, yeah, same deal. Um, uh, and it always has that like hard uh, piece to it. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking at his arm, and he's got the same kind of uh, the same kind of uh, material there, right? You can see the uh, yeah, the, the same kind rigid. of like it's stiff. Sorry, I, I said sixty four Cold War. It's a Cold War. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's I, I would say that this is the same kind of like stiff material that you would expect in a collar. Yeah, I mean that was a lot easier than I thought it would be, to be honest. Yeah, it's you know a lot of the stuff isn't isn't really crazy. It's just a matter of of having built it once or twice. You know, I've yeah. I've built a, a couple of formal wear outfits in here, and and again, like mm. you you kind of get used to I, like I didn't look up a shape for this or anything. I may be way off in the way that this is designed, um, but I, I, I've kind of gotten used to some of the ways that these patterns look and the way that you would put them in, and so <clears throat> mm. yeah, that's kind of the way that I would go about doing this. Yeah, the only difference is his is a little longer and has two canvas pockets on his like thigh yeah. area. That's it. The longer is not so hard to do. In fact, if yeah, I you just go and, make it go down. Yeah, I'll straighten this out and just grab those bottom edges, and we can bring that down. Literally, but again, like the probably. stitching all updates and everything, so it'll now yeah, go. Yeah, you're good. Yep. You can see uh, now, like that, why you need contouring in some of the shapes too, right? Like it's. It's starting to look yeah, a little bit like, nigga. yeah, like on, on her curvy form, it's starting to look a little bit like a, uh, a nightgown or something, right? Yeah. What I like about his is he has the belt that tightens it it around. In. Yep. Yeah, which is what I'm kind of open for. Yep. Well, he has two. He has, two. He has the, the, the gun holster that is above his regular belt. Yeah, the and then the, the belt below that. Yeah. This the I'm only other thing that I do, um, which I can show you here, I'm going to go and edit my material again. Um, let's pull this down just a little bit to make sure that this is emphasized. So I'm going to go into the, uh, the white material that's on her here, and mm -hmm. I'm just going to change the way that this is, uh, that this is rendering into the reflection area roughness, and I'm going to bring the roughness all the way down, and I'm going to change the color to be dark, uh, so that it's shiny. She's wearing a garbage bag now. Yeah. Uh, and the reason that I want to do this is to show you that uh, when you're simulating this stuff and you get to a certain point here, um, I can see this on her bum here. I can see the, the topology, right? I can see where her edges are mm. on the avatar. It's right there. Uh, okay. So the reason that's happening, right, is my avatar is not crazy high poly. In fact, it... You really don't want it to be. You can see it really yeah. bad here too, right? Those stripes. You yeah. don't really notice this in uh, when you're in Marvelous Designer and uh, and you're simulating without a reflective material. Uh, but you can see as soon as you put something reflective on, I notice it in her breasts. Anything that's supposed to be round, I'll notice it. So I'll notice it on her butt. I'll notice it when she's got um, uh, shoulders or, or you know the fabric goes over her arm. I'll notice it on the top of her shoulders and anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and all that's happening is, again, like realistically, when you look at the way that your, your actor looks, um, you know, your avatar is just made up of flat surfaces, right? Even though we've got normals that are being edited so that it looks round, it, it still is just a bunch of, of flat planes. Yeah. And those flat planes, when you simulate fabric across it, are carried through into the, into the actual fabric. You can actually see that line. Straight oh, up, and, yeah, yeah, right. So it's it's kind of bad. So 
when I'm ready for export. And don't, don't do this before you're ready for export. So I'll switch over to the fitting um, simulation to make sure that I'm ready, I'm ready for export. Mm -hmm. And I'll select the avatar. I'm gonna go and change the avatar rendering style here again, because this will actually slow it down a little bit. Like so. With the avatar selected in your, um, in your panel over here, your properties editor, you can go down to the bottom and there's a smooth avatar. Oh, this is easy. essentially the same thing as adding a turbo smooth. So and so I'll turn this times? on and bring it up to two. Now, remember that your avatar is being used for collision, right? For the simulation. And mm -hmm. so if you go too high in this smooth avatar, it will break everything. <laughs> And no so, be, yeah, be careful of that. But yeah, you can yeah. see what just uh, like I'm I'm subdividing her twice. So it's like a subdivision level. Yeah, two, and that line's gone. Right. Like we're getting nice and smooth in that in that shape now. Uh, another thing that you can do when you're doing clothing is if you um, you notice like I've, I've got her head in here. I've got her like all of her arms and her hands and her feet and like toes. If I'm just doing a jacket or I'm just doing something that's localized, I will often go into 3ds Max and delete the head, delete like the arms where they aren't needed or whatnot. Like your your jacket's got arms, so you're going to need those on there. But like yeah. deleting kind of just past the wrist and down, so you don't have all the fingers. You know, deleting from the knee down, so you don't have the legs. What that allows you to do is that if your avatar is say uh, twenty thousand triangles, and then you're subdividing it twice in here. Like it, it ends up being quite heavy, right? You're going to be at like 160,000. Yeah. Yeah. But if you delete those portions and you get it down to 8,000 triangles for just the torso, now it's not so bad. You know, now you're, you're subdividing in here, but you're only subdividing the section that you need. And so I will, I will do that on occasion and get it out. Yeah, I usually only bring in what I need. Like if I'm doing gloves, I'll bring in just a hand, maybe yeah. the forearm yeah. too, but... Uh, and then, yeah, that. and then the only other thing that I do before export is I go and drop this down to three. And then your PC um, screams. Yeah, my, my computer's going to say, oh, please, dear Lord, do not hurt me. And it's I'm crazy say, how, like, performance might render. be marvelous is. Yeah. Yep. And so, yeah, so this will take a moment. Uh, but again, with, with 11, the way that this works is that it'll only render uh, and, and, and simulate what's going on here until it stops moving and then the renderer will actually stop uh oh, which nice. is kind of new it didn't it didn't do that before uh before yeah, you actually cool. manually stop it and so yeah and so i can turn this on usually i am i am the world's most patient individual when this happens um mm -hmm. i'll turn it on and i'll you know i'll go get myself a coffee and i'll, I'll read the sports section of the paper mm -hmm. i'll let it go like i don't want to hurry this up i don't want to like you can see like even the menu didn't close it hasn't yeah. crashed. It's just taking all of my my system resources. Which to is do this. crazy because your PC is pretty godlike. So. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's so for it to do that, right? And that's that's going to give me something that I can export that I'll be really happy with in terms of the the level of detail and type of stuff that I'm getting. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the only thing to remember was that I I imported her at two hundred percent. So when I export the clothing, I have to export 50. the clothing at fifty percent. Yeah. Okay. That, uh, so. Retopologize it, right? Because Marvelous isn't the greatest when it comes to retopo. Um, yeah, doing so there, under like the folds and stuff, it gets a little tricky there, right? Like it does. So there's there's a couple of schools of thought when it comes to retopologizing clothing. Um, I've seen a lot of people that use ZBrush and Z Remesher to kind of do it automatically. Mm -hmm. Um, this this will provide you with topology that makes a lot of sense in terms of the shape that you're getting. Um, so, you, you know, you're going to get things like there's, there's wrinkles that go this way. And so yeah. you're going to get topology that kind of like follows those wrinkles and goes in that way, right? With the other edges going this way. Yeah. Um, and, and that makes a lot of sense. You know, having, having your topology kind of follow in and around the shapes that you're getting, like it, it makes sense for it to do that. It means that the, the geometry is adhering to the shape of what's there. The other, um, the other thing that I see people do is to actually go in, if I go and delete this, uh, the other thing that I see people do is to just say, you know, screw it, and I'm going to put really animatable topology on here, you know, that just is really beautifully quadded and does that. 
Yeah, that's usually my approach because I love me a quad. I'm not gonna yeah, lie to yeah. And so what's going to happen when you do this is that you're just going to have to make sure when you triangulate that your triangulation is going the right way um, so that you don't end up with like a sawtooth cutaway on your model on your... based off one of these turned triangles. Mm -hmm. um, the other option, which is one that, uh, to be honest, I have not investigated myself, but I know is something that is done a lot of studios are now uh, essentially saying, uh, forget about it. And the triangulated mesh that you get from inside of Marvelous is what they're putting in the game. Really? And I've, I've actually seen a couple of meshes, a couple of games that were done in this way. And it's just how like, do you, you need that? Really? You, that you're just going to do that? And I guess, I mean, I have, like I said, I haven't done, I haven't done any research in it. Or I haven't tried doing any meshes in that way. I'm, I'm still very fond of clean topology and having edges go where they're supposed to go kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But based off what studios are doing this, I assume that they have good reason for it. Um, I just, like I said, I haven't put any, uh, any research into whether or not it, it yields good results. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're, they're essentially uh, exporting the, the triangulated mesh. Um, you know, your mesh is all triangles in engine anyway, so it's not like it's going to uh, change too much yeah. there. It's when you just, unwrap it, it changes that entirely. But that's the thing. You don't have to unwrap it, right? Your UVs come from your pattern. So if you're not retopologizing, you're just spitting it out from here, there is no UVs. This, it's just this. This is my UVs. Hmm. And so that part is kind of taken care for you. It's, it's already kind of done. Uh, like I said, I can't, I can't speak, uh, to this, whether, whether it's a good idea or not. I haven't, I haven't attempted it, but I can tell you from the, the caliber of studios that are doing that, um, it is, uh, it is a, a fairly, uh, high, high caliber studios that are doing this, this kind of okay. thing. So it's an avenue to explore. Yeah, it is. It, like, like I said, it, it is something that I definitely, uh, will be taking a look at. It's something that I will be going and investigating. Um, it, I mean, it's interesting. Like one less thing I have to read up. That was always a great thing, you know. Like, no, absolutely, and especially when you're talking about clothing, um, because if you've done a good enough job in your avatar, and your avatar is human enough and looks enough, you know, good enough, and um, mm -hmm. is is compelling enough to have the clothing just automatically be done once you, once you do something like this, like that is a huge windfall. Um, mm -hmm. In terms, it's of, a lot of time saving. It's that exactly. is a lot of time saving. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still finding it uh, pretty quick to go through my pipeline of morphing in Max and bringing it back and everything. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I would like to investigate to see how, uh, how that does change the things and, uh, you know, what kind of uh, looks you get inside of, uh, inside of a game engine, you know, bring that fabric into Unreal and see what it looks like in there. Yeah, I definitely have to play with it. So yeah, so there, my simulation has stopped now. Oh, Chris. and this is yeah, like I'm getting, I'm getting some really nice, like at three uh, polygons, right? If I go into the mesh here to show you this, like it's, it's dense. dense. Yeah, yeah, it is. And that again, like that's one of the reasons why I like bringing my character up to um, to two hundred percent is that you know what I've got typed in as a as a resolution for this is three. But what I'm actually getting is half of that. I'm getting 1.5, right? And it's because the scale of the character is forcing that scale difference in the clothing. Yeah. And so, yeah, so like awesome. this, is, this is pretty, I mean, this, this will melt your mind a little mm -hmm. bit. But what you're looking at now is wireframe. Yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah, if you zoom yeah. in. Yeah. It's dense it's enough crazy. that it looks like the clothing. And so... It looks like the clothing. Well, it doesn't help that it's, you know, the black color. It's well, hard yeah. to see the gray. But uh, no, that's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to actually do it because yeah, I, I, I think I'm gonna make the pants first, and yeah. then you know work uh, my way the other way because he has these weird pants too. Yeah, yeah. But I, I gotta do boots first because the pants go in the boots, and then the shirt goes over the pants, and then it's a whole thing. Bob's your uncle. Uh, Bob's Robert's your mother's brother. There you go. <laughs> there you go, man. Thank you. I'm glad to have helped, my friend. Let me know how it goes, and uh, yeah, I'll I'll be showing you. It'll take me a little bit because now I'm doing I'm working now, so I only get time from like six to you know whatever. Yep. Yeah. All, All right. right, man. Awesome. Are you able to send me this little I, video? I will. I will send you a link as soon as I upload this. Awesome. Thank you. You got it, brother. All right. I gotta go eat. I'll catch you later. Ciao.
Bye.